talked about needing some contrast, needing some, some a, a clear, recognizable object to really help your art. And she has done a lovely Sharpie drawing with the shadow and the basic shape. And that is all you need to get, get into it. We don't need to be able to count the, mm -hmm. the times of the pattern or any of that kind of stuff. And she's already started with a fun selection of textures and things. Because of my one rule, we're not using like literal pineapples in there, but she found some cool magazines to get us started with. Um, a lot of people, a common question is, uh, do you start with the background or the foreground? And I always smile because part of my whole fun of this is confusing what is foreground and what is background. I love depth play. And all right, I'm going to start and show you a little bit. Um, I like this. This page is, is cool. I'm going to grab it and see where we end up a little bit. Uh, I can't help but use some of my own sensibilities, and we're jumping in with some some fashion fun a bit. Uh, we're trying to make some of the pineapple with some fashion. So, as far as like technically, how do we do this? We got we got our glue and we got our brush. And I slap some glue right onto the canvas in the general area where I had in mind to put it. And I'm going to go for it. I actually kind of like how the shape of the legs is similar to the shape of the pineapple. Now you can already see I've blown past the edge of the pineapple. Well, maybe with the next page, maybe we'll uh, find the edge again. Let's see. You saw. In in her reference up there, it's got the hint of blue sky. I was recommending that to start with, we keep it simple and keep it bright behind, so that that pineapple pops. But she's got some neat um, pages here that are white but with some cool blues mm -hmm. so maybe it can feel like sky a little bit so now i'm going to grab some of this i like the little symbols mm -hmm. and the water and the pattern and then let's see maybe we maybe right off the bat i uh try to help find that edge of the pineapple again now we got a little shape but since i still have this in my hand i like this little funny sun pattern what the heck i'll put that up here I like to bounce around the picture. I don't get stuck in a spot. And since this stuff's fun, I'll keep going. I'll try to go with the largest things that I can. Put some glue on the on the canvas, slap the paper down, and then glue over it again. Quick and go. Do you worry about bad bubbles or anything? I don't. That's a fair question. It's something people ask about a lot. I I embrace the bubbles. To me, the bubbles tell us that it's paper. But if you don't enjoy bubbles, something you can do is you you could you you could have a misting bottle and spray it a little bit ahead of time so that each scrap picks on some moisture before you glue it down. Some people also use brayers, but I, I have found that the main thing, as far as bubbles go, is what, what, what causes the bubble is the glue is introducing moisture to the paper. The paper is then trying to expand to take on the moisture, and that's what it, as it's trying to expand and dry, it's out of sync with the ground that it's on. So if you instead pre-moisten the paper a little bit, it expands before you get it to the canvas. And it, all this happens in 20 seconds, basically. But I have found that it's only, to me, it's only at this stage that the bubbles are annoying. When you're looking at this clean, pristine canvas and you're like, how come there are bubbles on this thing? As soon as the whole thing's covered, I mean, mine are, this, even my, even my Porsche hood has got bubbles. I've come to just let it be the symbol of the fragility of the paper. All right, um, I kind of want to jump into uh, 
an advanced trick that I, I may, I may pause and do an exercise of this with you later, but I'm going to make an edge of the pineapple using some lines on the page here. So we've got this cool, uh, umbrella. Let's see what happens if I, uh, make an edge of the pineapple with this piece of umbrella. Mm -hmm. And now you can, hopefully you can see now that uh, the fun that I, mm -hmm. the fun that we had with uh, ex uh, exploring the values and your little visual poem now is starting to pay off with this rich variety of stuff. Let's see what else. What I don't do is, I don't go, all right, we need this tiny little leaf. And I don't, I don't do much of this with uh, ripping out a little leaf. Mm -hmm. It could, but it's, to me it starts to become a little tedious. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you've got to do what you got to do and maybe you end up doing that. But to me it's more fun if possible. Here's a here's a you know a very everyday run of the mill makeup ad, but maybe this makeup ad feels similar enough to be to be some uh, you know some leaf flare at least to get it started. Maybe maybe I cover over that later, but it's a it's a fun start. And you might even find things that look even more like that. To me, the fun is finding things. Here, this is pretty fun. I love finding things that are not literal, but kind of close. Like here, just just on my second page down, I found this. This is a little crowd, a little trio of uh, runway walkers, and look how they feel a little more like pineapple times. And now it's getting fun already. And I'm always waiting for, I I, I, uh, I can't stop a piece until it has some moments of pleasant surprise where something not obvious is enjoyable like that. What, what do you think? Are you, are you buying this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, let's see. Let me do a tiny bit more. Um, I definitely bounce around the, 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 the canvas like this. We need some fun text. The other thing I don't really do is I, I don't want to force a horizon line and then borrow another horizon line. I don't that would be just too easy. Um, but I don't mind some things that keep the mood keep the mood good. So this one says uh, a true departure. Maybe that can be some fun uh, background layer over here. I'll show you this now. When I come to the edge, if I want, I just go right over the edge. That's really satisfying with the canvas. <clears throat> and then you start finding enjoyable stuff. And also, don't be so literal that we, okay, pineapples are green, skies are blue, and that's all I'm going to use. You know, the, the good stuff comes when when some kind of surprise happens. A little bit of pink hair, maybe that makes the cut, we'll see. So you all have your pile of colors that you that are your hint of a start. All, all of my pieces started out with a color plan and then they got better mm -hmm. somewhere. Uh, this one, this one I knew I was going to have the, the, the pinks and lavenders and blues. But then in pursuit of those pinks, this came with the yellow and I love it. So that's what I meant by don't pre-edit. You know, don't decide on your art before you've made your art. You know, let the art, let yourself be present. So somewhere in those piles you're going to have what you thought you wanted out of it, but then there's going to be this nice surprise of something else. And, and are those um, palm trees? Is that like one big piece of paper? That's an example where I, I, no, I didn't, 
I, I didn't have a printer of those, so that I blew up digitally and printed those parts. Okay. And I'll do that sometimes. Okay. I, I don't get into that for the for the class because it's just yeah. unnecessary level. But um, but color wise, that yellow is an example. <clears throat> or here in the Sea of Tranquility, I knew the blues, I knew the yellows, I knew the skin tones. But then I loved it when the, this came with the you know. Bahamas signs and greens and oranges and th that's where um, complementary colors can make the art sing uh, beyond your basic color plan. Okay, uh, 